Hi everyone, Nick here. Um, I'm just popping in with my Thursday thought for the week. Um, and what I thought I'd like to do today is provide a little bit of clarification as to what we're looking to do um, and, and, and head as a church in the near future. Uh, hopefully you're all doing well and you're looking forward to busting out of level 3 and, and moving into level 2. Um, you know, there's a bit of light at the end of the tunnel for us. Um, but I've been thinking a little bit about how the last six weeks and, and essentially what we've been doing in the last six, six weeks as a, as a nation is uh, really been working in crisis mode. Um, and, and we've been dealing with a threat that's been right in front of us. Uh, I know for some of us that threat's been a lot greater than for others, and particularly for those of us with health conditions or maybe at the, the, the end of the health, at the end of the age spectrum. But what we've been doing is, as a nation, is responding to the, 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 the immediate threat in front of us and restricting any uncontrollable transmissions um, of the COVID-19. Uh, but that's what we do in crisis mode, we respond to the immediate threat. Um, for those of you who have children, and say for example, one's fallen out of a tree, what do you do? Um, you don't carry on with your picnic or whatever you're doing, you, you grab the child, you take them to the doctors, to the hospital, you get them fixed, you deal with the immediate threat. And, uh, you do what it takes to fix the problem um, and so that's where we've been as a nation certainly as a church and certainly as in our families uh, but now we're moving from crisis mode into recovery mode a and recovery mode offers us well first of all it offers us a little bit of hope that we're moving to a brighter future but recovery mode also implies that things will be different uh, for a number of us it'll mean learning how to operate in a, in a new environment some of us will be facing redundancies and things like that. Some of us will be facing reduced financial capacity. Some of us will be concerned for our health or maybe the health of um, some of our family members. And while recovery offers us hope, the reality is that the road to recovery is often a lot longer than we'd like it to be. So if, that, and that, if that's the case, that means that we really need to step up our game at how we look after one another. Um, so once again, I do want to say, if you have any needs, if you require assistance because uh, you have changed financial circumstances or, or health circumstances, then please contact the office at pastor at mahu.org.nz and we will get in touch with you and look to see what we can do to help you. You know, you're not alone, remember that. Um, this is what we do as a church, we look after one another. Now, the, the other thing I want to talk today to you about though is, is how we intend to operate in, in level two as a church. A part of being a church is a community that um, grows in our love for one another um, in Jesus. And that's why in the New Testament, um, one of the outworkings of that is that you see the church is always meeting together. They're always um, growing together. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25, the Bible tells us, it says, Consider how to stir one another up in love and in good works, not neglecting to meet together. You see, when you when you grow in and when you're growing in love as a community, it's it's a lot. Well, you could say it's a lot harder to do to grow in love if you're not meeting together or not together. Or maybe it's a lot easier because you can just ignore people when you like. But meeting together is important. That's something that we um, um, find in the New Testament. So how is that going to work for us as a church? Meeting together in, in the limitations that uh, that we have in level two. Well, the reality is we're a bit stuck when it comes to building space at the moment as a church. Um, this is part of the reason we've been looking at a building project for all these years. Um, and, and while the government allow, regulations allows for uh, meetings under 100 people, the reality is that um, our, our chapel space will probably will seat approximately only about 60 people um, with, with all the kind of spacings that are required. So. Prior to lockdown, uh, we were getting about 250 to 300 in, in, our, in our two services on Sunday. And we've got a congregation of over, over 500 if everyone turns up. So with this in mind, uh, as elders, we've decided over the duration of Level 2, we're going to meet in a number of different venues over Sundays uh, for Sunday worship. Uh, we're going to become a multi-site church, if you like. Uh, the, the chapel we're looking to kind of um, use for young families. Uh, we've also, um, we'll also be making use of the chapel we have in Matakana as well. Uh, we've also, um, the, Ian and Jill Morrison have graciously allowed us to use um, the Hepburn Creek Road, um, uh, the hall that they've got in their retreat centre. Uh, so we've got a number of places that we can use for, 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 you could say, larger gatherings of 30 to 60. 
but we'll also be using um, a number of houses throughout our area as well. We've had already about 10 people offer their houses for Sunday Church. And what we're planning to do is pretty simple really. Uh, we're going to meet at a designated house or hall. Um, we, I've got, well, I'll have a pre-recorded message for us to kind of share and listen to. Um, we can have a time of prayer for one another and maybe a time of worship. And then have a cup of coffee together uh, before we head home. So yes, it will be a little different, I get that. It'll be a bit weird, um, but it won't be forever. And it will actually give us a really good opportunity for us as a church family to look out after and to look out for one another. So for this to work properly, we probably still need at least another 10 to 15 houses that can comfortably seat between 6 and 12 people. So if you're able to help us out there, um, please contact us once again at, mahu, at pastor, .mah, sorry, pastor at mahu.org.nz and um, Karen and Jones will get in touch with you over the next few weeks um, to, to work through some details. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be working our way through the church database to allocate um, all of you a house, church, a house or church base for you. Now, it may be for some reason, one reason or another, that you, you prefer not to be involved. That could be for health reasons or any other reason. Hey, that's okay. Um, we're still going to be downloading our messages over YouTube. But if you can contact us by email to tell us that you're, you're not going to be able to participate, that would be really helpful for us. Um, but for the rest of us, hey, this is, this is a great opportunity for us to gather and, and do life as a church family in a little bit of a different way. So expect to hear from us over the next two uh, weeks. Now, this Sunday when we meet for church, um, and remember in your pyjamas, hey, it's, um, remember it's Mother's Day, and, and while you mothers are eating your breakfast of bacon and eggs that have been lovingly crafted and prepared for you, um, I'm going to be continuing our series, Fano of Freedom and talking about what it means to be part of God's family uh, and, and the practical difference that that makes in our everyday lives. So I look forward to meeting you then. Um, well, maybe I won't see you, but you'll sure see me. Um, so, but with that, um, God bless everyone. Um, don't forget that God's with you and have a really wonderful weekend.